Hi, thanks for joining us here at West London Sport. I'm here with Paul Warburton, the former sports editor of the Fulham Chronicle. Just to chat a bit about Fulham, really. And Paul, I think I'd be fair to say that it's not looking good at the moment. Five games left, six points off Burnley, who have played a game less. Um, as far as you're concerned, do you think it's done or are you still holding out a bit of hope that Fulham can somehow pull off a great escape and stay up? How are you, your sort of thoughts on the, the situation at the moment? In a short two-letter word, no. Um, <laughs> sadly, I'd like to say there was hope to be offered, but looking at the remaining fixtures, I could see Fulham getting a maximum 33, 34 points from those. Now, before you ask me, <laughs> which games. This is where Fulham have been able to turn things on their head at, at times this season. I mean, who would have imagined they would win at Liverpool and draw at Arsenal and Tottenham? But they've done both of those things. Are they capable of losing at home to Burnley? Yes. <laughs> Are they capable of home at losing to, uh, to Newcastle? Of course. Could they win at Southampton? Yes. But will they win all five? No, they won't. And the fact of the matter remains that without wins, pretty much, I mean, four out of five wins might just save them, but they're not going to do that. Mm. I remember, I mean, it wasn't too long ago that everyone was looking at that Fulham v Newcastle game last day of the season and saying that could be a, a cracker, that could be between those two to stay up, whoever wins. But, I mean, Newcastle have put a good run together now, got a couple of wins and look to be OK. So it's really now they're looking at Burnley if they've got any hope whatsoever. And, that game against Burnley in a couple of weeks or whenever it is, really. I think if they lose that, you could pretty pretty much call it then after that, do you think? I think I I think even before that, Chelsea away, you know, they need results out of everything, you know, in some shape or form or another. Um, they they if they stand a chance of anything, 40 points may or may not do it. I'm not sure. But you, to get 40 points, you are going to have to do pretty much those four wins or you're going to have to get draws and wins and a combination of all of those. So if they were to be beaten by Chelsea, then, you know, depending on how the others do, it could already be done, you mm. know, before you get to Burnley, just mm. about. Yeah, it's, I mean, you say 40 points there. I mean, it's been a lot less in recent seasons, hasn't it? I think... Uh, when my team Blackpool got promoted, we got relegated with 39 and that was uh, a re re real high to get relegated. So that was even more of a kick in the, the teeth that that happened. But yeah. It's, uh, it's... The funny thing is, Dan, I looked that up a, a while ago, as you do. Yeah. Things trying to carve out hope for Fulham, if you want to call <laughs> it that. Uh, there was only one season which needed 40 points, believe it or not, since 2001. And that was the season West Ham mm, <laughs> actually, yeah. with Scott Parker and of Wolves course, yeah. playing those 40 points in order to stay up. But you're right, uh, the average over the last 20 seasons has been uh, 36, you know, with the lowest being 34. But you see, the teams in safety now have got 33, 34. Mm. So, you know... That isn't going to happen. You aren't going to have a, a side uh, surviving on 34. They, you, you, I can't see, with all the best will in the world, Brighton, Burnley and Newcastle only getting one more point for the, to, from now until the end of the season. So it's going to be closer to 40. And, uh, and mm, Fulham need 13, don't they? You know, So it's going to have to be pretty much results all the way. That is the big thing as well, isn't it? It's completely out of their hands now. It's Burnley and Newcastle and Brighton slipping up to a massive extent that they're going to drop enough points that somehow Fulham are going to catch them. And that is the, the sad reality of it. I mean, the last time we spoke, it was sort of February time. Um, mm. And things, they weren't amazing, but they were looking up a little bit. And February was a quite a strong month, a few wins together. Beat Liverpool in March, of course. But since that win against Liverpool, it's just been loss after loss and obviously got the draw against Arsenal that should really have been a win because of the late equaliser weren't didn't manage to hang on. But I mean when when you look at the team and the performances like what are the what is the big factor that you look at and think that's what's contributing to this bad run? Well let's go back a, a notch by saying let's look at the manager in charge. He's he was a great defensive midfielder, Scott Parker, in his time, both as a player for various Premier League clubs and England. 
but he thinks like a defensive midfielder. It's no secret, is it, that Fulham have carved out a number of nil-nil draws. Nine, I think it is, off the top of my head. And a fair number of 1-1 one -one draws. Now, you know, if they had managed a striker worthy of the name uh, in the summer or perhaps even in the uh, transfer window, uh, and although Josh Madge has been had an impact, not as much of an impact as, say, a striker coming last, at, last, yes, last September, of course, would have had. But they didn't get one, did they? You know? And it was interesting because he, uh, Scott Park was asked about, why didn't you go for Ollie Watkins? Because he was a Londoner, a West Londoner at that, you know? Mm. Could they have got Ollie Watkins? I'm pretty sure they could have done. Huge so. fee, though, Aston Villa paid for it. It would have been a massive commitment from the club, wouldn't it? 27 million. Yeah. That's what he went to Aston Villa for. But when you spend 110 million True. Yeah. two years ago, yeah. uh, or three years ago, and you know, you're not getting much return for it, there has to be one big outlay. outlay. And that outlay needs to go on a proven up and coming striker. Because whatever else you do need to do, you need to convert goals. You know, if Fulham, Fulham had won one nil another five times, that gives them 10 points more. And obviously that gives them 37 points. And they're looking at some comparative safety, but they didn't go for that one striker that would have made a difference. I would have, I would have gone for Ollie Watkins. I would have said, pay the wages he wants. Here's a guy who's going places. Here's a guy who's settled in London. He's going to be the person who will nudge you a one goal a game, possibly, you know? But they didn't. They went for the they went for the a stout defense, which has played very, very, very well, but then forgot about the attacker. When I say forgot about the attacker, they didn't think that buying one was as important as it as it really was. Because, frankly, the attack hasn't been good enough. And that's the deal. Mm. But, I mean, when you look at last season, though, Mitrovic, 26 goals, I think, was it? 26 he scored in the championship. Mm. They might have looked at him and thought, well, we don't need a striker because Mitrovic is banging in the goals and he's playing at the top of his game. But I suppose you've got to look at that as a big reason as well. He's just not been able to do it. And, I mean, I know he's had a couple of injury problems. He's had is it a COVID issue he had as well, didn't he? I'm not sure. Did, did he test positive? But... Um, so he's had that as well. So it's it's been stop start for him. But at the same time, you look at I think he's only scored three goals this season. It's just the thing. The thing with with Mitro is even last season there was a good provision for him. He isn't the person who is going to get the ball played over the top, run in on goal and score. He's not that fast. Mm. He is not a fast player, and it, therefore, what are his strengths? Balls into feet in the box, balls into head, perhaps, into the box, and essentially a ball into him from just outside the box, which he can turn and hit. Those are his strengths. He doesn't have any others. If you don't deliver to Mitro, he will not score you goals. He will not create them off his own back. And others in the Premier League can. You look at some of the people at Manchester United or other top clubs, they can run at teams. They can run up teams and they can go past them. Mitro can't go past the player. And therefore, he isn't ever going to be the one to get you those kind of goals. And they needed somebody like that as well. They needed somebody who could deliver balls to him as well. And that hasn't happened either. And frankly, I know this is going to be sound ever so clever. Why am I not managing Fulham? But I could see it coming. I really could. They needed... They needed somebody who was really good at delivering a ball that would actually play to Mitro's strengths. And they didn't have one of those either. Yeah. I mean, watching Fulham, they do seem to spend a lot of time playing in front of the opposition team and not getting in behind them, which is always a... You're always going to struggle with that, I think. Um, I mean, when you look at the squad, Paul, I mean, hmm. it's, it's strange, isn't it? Because there's a lot of actual good talent and young talent in the team. It's not like you're looking at the team and thinking, oh my God, like what are we, like Sheffield United thinking, oh my God, like what are we going to do here? There's mm. there's positives in there and there are a lot of exciting young players they've got. But I mean, if they go down again, obviously it will be Championship, Premier League, champ yo yo in from the two divisions. Would you look at the team and think we need to rebuild it slightly? We need to do something a bit different here? Or would you be keen to keep it together? And, and can they keep it together if they go down? 
Uh, the answer is yes, they will need to rebuild. And no, they can't keep that team together because the, the, the players, most of them are, are not most, but five or, five or six are loans. Yeah, right? like Anderson and people like Madrid. And the best loans, Anderson, you've just mentioned, Adrobio and others will go back to their clubs. Actually, mm -hmm. I suspect that one or two of those are now looking at a uh, Good moves. I think Anderson, especially. I think he's. I mean, the reports are already flying around about him, aren't they? He's impressed on a team that's been battling relegation as a defender. That's quite hard to do as well in, in a lot of cases. He would give Harry Maguire a run for his money any day of the week. <laughs> no, I mean he do, he would. You know, he, he he's better than Maguire. He can pass better. His positioning skills are better. He anticipates. You know, and he's and he's you know robust as well. You know, if he were English, he would be an international. Same he will go to a Premier League club. You know, um, he won't be saying at Fulham in the Championship. Not in a thousand years, you know. Nor will, uh, nor will uh, Ariola, the keeper. And I suspect most of the others will go back as well. In fact, all of them will go back. So you are left with having to build in certain places, you know. That said... The championship isn't going to be as demanding. So do you give Michael Hector a second chance? Probably. Do you give Tim Ream another go? He can do a job, you know. Dennis Adoy in that division will do you a decent job. And remember, you've also now got Anthony Robinson as well and Tosin to augment that. So, you know, as, as a championship defence goes, it isn't the worst in the world, but you are going to need to tweak areas in order to improve it. Um, and yes, by the way, to the earlier point you made, Dan, yeah, they will go up and down. I can see it happening, you know. <clears throat> it's it's a frustrating, isn't it? Because there are worse, there are 100% worse places to be. I mean, look at, look at them a few years ago when they were right down the bottom of the championship and you're thinking they could end up in League One here quite seriously and only just escape. So there are worse places to be, but at the same time, it's such a frustrating place to be as a Fulham supporter when you can't build enough to stay up in the Premier League, but you're strong in the... I mean, you get a lot of good, good glory, you know, same as I've been a Norwich fan there. Going yes. up and down, and they've had another great season this year, and everyone's feeling good. So Fulham might be feeling good again next year if they finish up the championship. But it's such a like roller coaster of emotions. It's so difficult for the for the fans and frustrating. And it makes me laugh that West Bromwich Albion fans, when they chant, tend to go boing boing back. <laughs> And, and you think to yourself, boing, boing, is yeah. absolutely right. There's they go now, isn't there? Like, like teams like that. Yeah, there's quite a few teams. I mean, like you said, West Brom, Fulham, Norwich, they're all in the same boat pretty much. Yeah, I, up until a, a more recently, Wolves might have been categorised similarly, you know. Yeah. Uh, and Aston Villa, remember, you know, one of the reasons I mentioned Watkins a while back was that at the end of the last season, Villa escaped by the skin of their teeth on the last day. And the fact of the matter remains that if you put it to Ollie Watkins, look, we'll pay you this amount of money and you can stay with a club that's bouncing up again, Fulham, you know, or you can go to a club like Aston Villa, which will be a bigger club, but, you know, they've had their problems and, you know, they could be in relegation trouble. You know, you've got a good selling point, you know, but nobody at Fulham made the slightest effort as far as I can tell and I got the impression when he was asked that Scott Parker didn't really fancy him you know well that was a big mistake for a start even even if you didn't go for Watkins you need a striker you know you need that extra person and I think Fulham will need, will, will need that even in the in the championship to be honest with you I mean how much rope has Mitro got left does he really want to stay well maybe you know I mm, think it could spell the end of it, his time at the club this season? I mean, what kind of sense do you get? Do you think it is coming to an end? It's difficult. I mean, you've got to convince this man, this Serbian international, you know, that, that, that he is going to have to play in the championship for the second time in four years. You know, you can sell it once, can't you, that kind of moment. Look, stay with us, we'll bounce straight back. You know, that's, that's, that's not going to be a problem. But twice, you know... You have to ask yourself the question, does he really want to do that a second time? After all, this is the best part of nine, ten months out of a player's career, isn't it? So mm. double it and you've got, you know, nudging two years where you play second tier football. I, I think I think it's going to be harder to persuade him this time than it was last. 
And at, but at the same time, he's not done anything this season to really warrant staying in the Premier League. He's, he's, he's not been good enough. So no. you look at that and think, well, are any top flight clubs going to go for him? And at the same time, I suppose he could go abroad somewhere else that, that might be interested in him. But I mean, I suppose from Fulham's perspective, they might be looking at it as well and thinking, do we need to go in another direction? But I mean, like you say, I mean, as far as you're concerned, do you feel like it's a case of they'll need to rebuild the team rather than they'll be choosing to rebuild the team? And as well, I was thinking, have Fulham got to that point now where, like we've just spoken about going up and down, where they do have to... And they've had a lot of turnover of players in the last couple of years. Don't get me wrong, the team's changed a fair bit. But, I mean, what like, what do they need to do to to be able to come up and actually build a foundation to stay up? Like, what what is the missing ingredient? I know it's a big question to ask, and you might you might not be able to put your finger on one thing, but what is it? like? From they need to keep Scott Parker. Uh, I know that he's got his critics, and I and I was one of them. Remember at the top of this uh, broadcast that when I said that he doesn't really understand, I think forwards or the need for them. <laughs> well, I mean, I say the need for forwards. It's not his thing to see it from a forwards point of view, but he's very good at building a team. I think that he understands young players, and I think he understands are getting the best out of them too. So, for example, you know, Anthony Robinson, Tozin, yeah, you know, they, they, they um, to an extent, Adam Ola Lutman, uh, Dick Dover reed they kind of thrived at Fulham. And I think they thrived because of Scott Parker. So what he needs to do is to find hungry footballers with talent, like the ones I've mentioned, that can spearhead Fulham's charge, if you like, back to the Premier League. And then when they get there... He needs to augment, if Parker's still in charge, he needs to, to augment it with two or three really talented players. Now, by really talented, I don't mean ones that come with baggage. You know, poor, I mean, Ruben Loftus cheek came off the back of a very serious injury. Yeah. And, there's a, and this season was all going to be about rebuilding his, first of all, his confidence, his form. And, and hoping that those would all click into gear. To me, that comes with baggage. You know, you're hoping that person comes with, you know, uh, an intent to, to bounce back to where he was. There's too many questions there, to be honest with you. I think, as I said before, you need somebody who's pretty much there or thereabouts, the power of three, <laughs> and then you can build around that with young hopes who are skilled and talented and who will react to good coaching. And Parker's pretty good at that, in my opinion. Mm. Yeah, it's frustrating that obviously Fulham are looking like they're going to have to do that again for not the first time in, in recent years. Yes. Uh, but you never know, we, we can look back at this chat and think, well, what on earth are we talking about? They could pull off a miraculous survival <laughs> and we'll look stupid, but it's, yeah, at the yeah. moment, it, it looks Terrific. unlikely. Imagine if they won four out of five or five out of five. It can happen. I mean, you look at Leicester a few years ago, the year before they won the league, and yes. they were done it for not long before, to, you know, until the end of the season. So, it yeah, can but if you, go to our, if you go to Arsenal, Dan, and, you know, you, your, one, <laughs> your one shot on target is the penalty <laughs> from which you score. It's, it's true, not yeah. promising, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, touch on Scott Parker there. Will it be a case of, I mean, it might be a case of fans will, and Fulham will be looking at, should they keep him? But is it also a case of, can they keep him? Because mm. there's going to be a few clubs that probably are looking for managers. It will wait to yeah. see what Roy Hodgson at Crystal Palace, the situation is there. I mean, Spurs may be a bit too big, but they're without a manager. There's always clubs looking for managers. And even if Fulham go down, I feel like Scott Parker's... Um, reputation will actually still be intact because of the work he did last season and you know they're not exactly been bad for them well apart from West Ham, go around, his, go around his old clubs you know I mean apart from West Ham because it looks like David Moyes has done a decent job there this season um Tottenham why wouldn't they go for Scott Parker they've had a big name there it hasn't worked out Inevitably, Jose Mourinho always has a shelf life, you know, wherever he goes. So why not go for something a little bit more, I don't know, uh, sure, something with a bit of foundation to it. Some, and somebody who knows the club, which Scott Barker does. He, after all, not only did he play for them, but he's recently coached the under-23s, didn't he? And then if you go look at, say, Newcastle, 
you know, there's loads of fans who will tell you Steve Bruce isn't the, isn't the final word. And then if you, you know, if you want to just plow on through all the, all the possibilities, you, you could say Crystal is a South London boy, Roy Hodgson's going, why not Crystal Palace? You, you could make a case for a number of clubs who might fancy somebody like that. And let's face it, he's only 40. So possibly his best managerial years are to come. And he's proven that on a, you know, a so-so budget this year, Fulham more or less competed. And as I said, if they'd had a proven striker, I think they would be, you know, a shoe in to stay in the league. So you're right. Maybe somebody will come in for Scott Parker and uh, uh, and then take him back to the Premier League. Mm. And like you say, he's young, isn't he? He's stylish as well, you know. These are these are big things people... Well, let's not get carried you know? away here. I wasn't <laughs> sure about that. Yeah, I wasn't sure about that Cardi he had on at, at, uh, at the Emirates Listen, the other day. I think look, he- I don't no, know what uh, Spam and what they sell, but it had, it had, it had vestiges of, of like, you know, your mother's tote best bet effort. He's been better than that. And I've told I him. I don't too. think he's doing his managerial uh, stock any harm wear sporting jackets like that. I think Spurs are going to be looking at that and going, yeah, you know, this, he's young, he's stylish, let's, let's have him. These are things to look for. Um, just finally then, uh, I've got my... QPR hat on here a little bit with uh, with this one, but I'm in, intrigued to, to get your thoughts. Stefan Johansson has gone out and loaned to QPR in January and he's done very well and a lot of QPR fans are really pleased with him and they want to keep him at the club. So it begs the question, why did Fulham loan him out in the first place? And if Fulham get relegated or even if they stay up miraculously, is there a way back for him at Fulham and do you want to see a way back for him? Good question. I think if um, Fulham were relegated, then you've got to ask yourself: Can he do a job in the? Uh, can he do a job in the championship? Does he want to go back to Fulham though? Because he's been there a long time. I, I think there is a sell-by date for all players at a club. You know, no matter who they are, pretty much anyway. I mean, the odd defender, the odd goalkeeper, we can think of as a long term. But uh, midfielders, attackers that tend to move around a lot. You know, I'm not sure Stefan Janssen wants particularly to go back to Fulham. Um, and he certainly won't be going back if Fulham survive, as we've uh, suggested the miracle might occur. Um, does Stefan Johansson have a place in the top flight? Probably not. I think he's, he's not fast enough. And frankly, he's not robust enough. You look at some of the people uh, uh, that Parker thought would be better suited to that role. Harrison Reed. Uh, Angisa, Lamina, you know, those types of yeah. players. That isn't Stefan Johansson. And those are the players that might well end up playing for Fulham. So there's really no rule, uh, room for him if he wants to play regular football. And he would be a good acquisition for Rangers. Re- really nice chap too, by the way. Yeah, he's that. he's been terrific, actually. I think he's maybe look at Charlie Austin with the goal, goals he scored. But since Johansson's gone there, he's uh, he's yeah. been a massive factor behind the, the turnaround this happened at uh, Fulham's rival club but well yeah but thanks a lot for your, for your time Paul if you did enjoy Good this enough. video please give it a like and subscribe to the channel and we'll be back again soon with another Fulham video indeed we will thanks a lot